Hello everyone, welcome to the first of a series of videos that will show you how to leverage the quiz activity in Moodle to create quizzes and exams for your students. In this first part, I will explain the basic anatomy of a Moodle quiz and will create the basic structure of the quiz. In later videos, I will walk you through how to add questions to your Moodle quizzes and how to grade them. I am demonstrating this on a Moodle site with the snap theme. The positions of the settings may vary for you depending on the theme that is currently activated on your site or in your Moodle class. So with that said, let's get started. So to begin, we'll create a learning activity. And the learning activity that we'll choose is the quiz. Now once that has loaded, we will see a number of our settings here. I think it's a very good point for me to explain what I am doing. At this point, I am making the structure of the quiz. I am not yet adding any questions. So it's important to note that making a quiz on Moodle involves two steps. The first step is to make the structure of the quiz. That you could consider this as the instructions for the quiz, how it's going to be timed, and everything that attends to that. Adding questions will come in the second step and we're not going to cover that in this video. So I'll name my quiz demo quiz and here I will put my instructions in the description. I just have um, one instruction. Let me just say answer all questions. So now that I've put my description I can choose whether I want to show the description on the course page. This will allow students to see the description of the quiz before they even click the link to open the quiz. Now, I do not want to display my description, but you could choose to, describe, to, to, to display yours. It's all up to you. Then over to the right. Remember, I'm using a theme called Snap. Your theme may be different, so the settings may be located in a slightly different position, but you should be able to, to access the same settings. So I can now choose timing, and I will enable timing. So I would like this quiz to be available from the 22nd of June, and I want it to go live at 8 in the morning, so I'll choose 8 a.m. Then I'll also choose to close the quiz at on the same day let's say at around 2 p.m. now what do these settings do these settings control the availability of the quiz so essentially we're telling Moodle that this quiz will only be available for the time period from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the 22nd of June that means if students try to access it before that time they will not be able to attempt the quiz. If they try to access it after that time, again, they will not be able to access the quiz. They can only access it in that window of time between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. I also want to give my quiz a time limit so that when a student starts, at, if they, when it goes live at 8 and uh, they choose to start the quiz at 8, I don't want them to have the whole time period available to them to, to take the quiz. I want to control the time that they are allowed to be accessing the quiz. So I'll give it a time limit and you can choose whether you want to put the time minute the time limit in minutes or weeks, days, hours, minutes, seconds. It's all up to you. Mine will be will have a time limit of 5 minutes. So I will make sure the checkbox enable is checked. Now Below that, I have a setting. What happens when the time expires? If I click in here to check the auto access the options, you'll see that I have three options. The first, open attempts are submitted automatically. When I, if, if I were to select this one, if a student is still on question number four when the five minutes is up and they are not done with, let's say it has five questions, the quiz will automatically submit and whatever they had um, attempted will be graded if you have set up automatic gra grading or will be available for you to grade if you have manual grading set up. If I give them a grace period, which is the second um, option here, they will be able to, att to submit their attempt, but they cannot answer any more questions. Then 
The last option, attempts must be submitted before time expires or they are not counted. If a student fails to submit their quiz before the time is up, their whole attempt is discarded. So normally, I would prefer open attempts are submitted automatically. It creates a, lo a lot um, less stress for the students. So that's done. If I had chosen there's a grace period, I could then come and um, set the grace period here for the students. And you can always change the time from uh, days, hours, weeks, and so on. But I will not do that. I'll use open attempts are submitted automatically. So that is the timing. I will collapse this option. Then I'll go to the grade. If you have grade categories set up in your in your course, you can come and choose the appropriate category for this quiz or the exam that you're setting up. I have not set up my grade categories. Um, what is the grade to pass? If you have a certain minimum threshold, you can put it here. I will not do so. Then how many attempts can the student take? In my case, I do not want to give them unlimited attempts. I only want them to have one attempt, so I'll choose one. You can choose more if you would like, and they'll be able to reattempt the quiz. And if you choose more, let me just select two. You can choose the grading method, whether you will collect, you will record the highest grade, the average of the two attempts, or the first attempt, or even the last attempt. In my case, I only want to give them one attempt. So I will collapse the grade settings, and I'll go on to the layout. And in this layout, I can choose whether I want to show each question on a new page or if I want two questions per page, 17 questions per page, or if I want all questions to be on one page, I will choose never all questions on one page. Now, all these options have their own advantages and disadvantages. I personally use this one for short quizzes because it has less data, data requests to the server and all questions can just load at once and the student can just get on with their quiz. But if I was giving a longer exam, I would want to minimize the number of questions that they see per page because it becomes too long for them to be scrolling all the way down to access question number one or to, ac to access question number 100, sorry, and then go back to question number one. So I would set it up in a different way. Now, when you notice, I have show more. If I click on show more, it will ask me what navigation method do I want to use. Say I had multiple pages for my quiz. I could choose free, which allows them to go from page one to page two to page three and then back to page one. Or I could choose sequential. If I were to choose sequential, they can only move in one direction. So if they do not attempt any question on page one, they will not be able to attempt it again. So you can always um, choose the appropriate settings for you. And remember, whenever you put those settings, fill them in the description so that students know what is going on. And whilst, we're, whilst I am here, in case you have any questions about any of these settings, Moodle has a little help feature. You'll see these question mark icons close to all the options. You can just click on that and it will tell you what that setting does. So please feel free to use this feature to understand what's going on. Now I'll collapse that and I'll go to question behavior. The first option, shuffle within questions. You have two options. Do you want the options to be shuffled? So if you have option, if you have a multiple choice question, A to D are the options. If shuffle is turned on, it means for one student, option A, um, might be X, but for another student, X might be option D. So that shuffles the order of um, the options. Then in the case of no, you will set, it will appear as you had set it when you were setting the questions. How does this help? If you have questions that do not have uh, dependent options, you can choose yes. This allows to mix it up so students do not copy other students in case they are working in the same environment. It just creates a layer of confusion for the students so that they copy less. Of course, there are other better methods to control cheating, but this is just one of the simpler ones. Now, if you were to have questions that depend on other options, say, for example, you have an option D that says all of the above. If you were to shuffle such options, 
it will create confusion because all of the above could appear as the first option and there are no other options above it and that could confuse the students. So please use this with caution depending on the questions that you have. Then how questions behave? Deferred feedback, adaptive mode. Now I will not go into the details of this. I'll just leave it as deferred feedback, which is the default. And I'll go to show more. And under show more, you can allow redos within an attempt. Or you can have, if you have multiple attempts, you can um, allow each attempt to build on the last. I don't have multiple attempts, so I'll show less. Please feel free to experiment with these settings and see what works best in your situation. I don't want to, keep, to make this video too long, so I have to try and rush through the options. Then review options. During the attempt, the student can be able to review whatever they are writing. So I will leave these as they are. And immediately after the attempt, do you want them to be able to review the attempt, whether the marks were correct, whether the options were correct, the marks that they got, any specific feedback you gave for any question? Now, because of the settings that I used, remember I said my quiz will be available from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. And quiz students only have five minutes to take the quiz. That means if a student were to start at 8 o'clock, they'll be done by 5 past 8. Other students who choose to start later may be able to ask this student, what did you see in the quiz? Now, to avoid such things from happening, I would want to control what students that have uh, accessed the quiz and completed it can access after the attempt. So I will choose to uncheck this so they won't be able to see their attempt, they won't be able to see the feedback, and they won't be able to see the right answer. All they'll be able to see is their mark and any overall feedback. In case, in this case, I'll just uncheck overall feedback as well. Then later, while the quiz is still open, again, I will uncheck those options because I do not want them to be sharing the marks with um, their classmates. Then the last option, after the quiz is closed, I think when the quiz is closed at 2 p.m., it's okay for them to come and access their attempt and see what they got right and what they did not get right so that they can be able to revise and be better prepared for later assessments. So I will leave all of the options available. Now I will go back to the top and collapse this because I don't want it to be too long. Then I'll go to appearance. Um, in here, I don't think there's much to, to change. If you want to change anything, if you want to know what's going on, just remember, use the question mark icon Z. Then if I want to, oh, I skipped extra restrictions on attempts. Now, if I wanted to have some restrictions as to who can attempt the squeeze, I could do so. You can put a password if you wanted to put a password. If you are tech savvy enough, you can also require a specific network address that the students can access the quiz from. And you can also enforce a delay between the first and second attempts if they if if you have multiple attempts for your quiz, and um, you can also add browser security. And in here, you can use the Safe Exam browser. We'll have a tutorial for the Safe Exam browser at a later stage, or you can just um, have a full screen pop up. What this simply means is when they click Start Quiz or Attempt Quiz, the browser window will pop up and it will show a full screen overlay that will allow them to take the quiz in a, in a destruction free environment of course students can always alt tab and move to and move back to the lms to access notes or something else so this is just a low level of security but with the safe exam browser it gives a higher level of security but i will leave it at none all right let's show less then um we'll go to overall feedback. If I wanted to give overall feedback, say for a student who got 100%, I can say well done, you know, and give other types of feedback here. But I'm not going to set up the feedback. You can always do that in your own um, settings. Then under common module settings, if you have groups in your class, if you have set up groups, you can choose the group that, you, you can choose how to deliver the quiz. So you can set up this, this quiz for a certain group and uh, only members of that group will be able to take that quiz and the members of other groups will not be able to access it. I have no group set up, so I will just leave it like that. If you want to put any tags, you can come and enter the tags for your quiz down here. 
and if you have competencies set up you can come and choose the appropriate competencies down here all right so that's basically what you will do when you're setting up your quiz now that we are done i will save and display now when i save and display i want to show you what it will look like this is what it will appear like to the students so there's the title of my quiz demo quiz and there's the description answer all questions then moodle will also add some extra information just be below the quiz based on the settings that you you added so here it will tell the students that they only allowed one attempt and this quiz closed on monday 22 june at 2 p.m and the time limit was five minutes i should have been wiser and i should have set this for tomorrow but anyway it's uh something that you can always correct in your particular settings and the most important thing no questions have been added yet because that's the next part and i'll show you this part in the next video